and today uh, we are going to continue the discussion about uh, the visual design that we started uh, in uh, yesterday's uh, class and um, we remember we 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 want to discuss uh, about the alignment and the grid uh, layout of of uh, of the whole interface of the whole web page and in particular also of some specific elements in the page like for example dialog windows forms and something like that another important uh, you know um, dimension you remember that the three the three key uh, ingredients for the visual design were text uh, layout uh, and uh, colors okay uh, colors is the third most important and also the most uh, dangerous probably weapon in our tool set uh, so for example this uh, website is using a lot of colors uh, but uh, uh, probably not in the best way so it's too strong it's like you know, people screaming at you uh, a lot of people screaming at you at the same time and you really don't understand where who to listen to or what they're saying so in this case we, you don't understand where you should look uh, which is the most important things? What is the 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 navigation structure or the or the logic behind uh, this design? So of course this is a is an excessive example. No, it's a, it's a, something that uh, became famous for this, uh, just for uh, showing us uh, what what big damage we could do if we are abusing the usage of colors. Mm. So. Uh, colors are, are very important uh, because they give us uh, the, the, the opportunity of making something that is visually pleasant. And also colors uh, we already saw in the Gestalt principles uh, are very strong, uh, uh, you know, and uh, um, I say attributes uh, that will allow us to specify the grouping uh, or the similarity of different elements so that our brain can process them those and uh, and put them together in the same category so colors are, are very powerful and our mind is processing the, uh, those uh, very quickly but uh, we should not uh, exaggerate and uh, uh, first of all one uh, you know, suggestion that we are already following basically is uh, start uh, in grayscale or start in black and white as a first uh, as a first design iteration so this not uh, um, it's not uh, uh, it's for this reason that we are starting first uh, to create the wireframes of our tools okay so we will first ask you to create a wireframe interface uh, so just uh, very sketchy lines uh, and uh, and black and white interfaces so that we know uh, which elements we want to host in our page and uh, where they are and so on so that will be our main structure okay we already defined the structure of the page in the wireframe notation where there are no colors by definition okay um, and only later on a second step we add the colors to add the additional or uh, reinforce uh, the information that is already there so the fact that this is a title comes from its position not from its color Okay, then the color can reinforce them, can underline that and can give additional hints to say, okay, that is most impo more important than the rest. It's not the other way around. Okay, you cannot force or you should not force with colors or something that is not uh, conveyed by the layout uh, of the page. Hmm? Uh, so the most uh, the information is first conveyed by the text and how, how you write it, not just what you write but how you write it the size the uh, the position and so on and the layout then we have a color that will help in this uh, decoding okay um, and uh, uh, so we in the second step uh, we assign a meaning to the different colors that we are using and so this meaning should be consistent uh, first of all internally so we have an, an internal consistency how we use the colors in all in all of our website and also external consistency so that we are using the colors in the same way as uh, most of the other websites uh, uh, are using okay and uh, don't try to think uh, uh, at, uh, about individual colors for individual elements okay like we are doing we were doing with fonts uh, 
we don't decide the fonts uh, sentence by sentence. We define uh, a set of styles of text styles, and then we use those throughout all the application. And the same is goes goes for colors, uh, where we define a palette of colors and say, okay, this website or this application will use this set of five, eight, ten colors, no more than those, and with those meanings. And all the design should only use those colors or maybe slight variations. So maybe we have a darker or a lighter or a more transparent version to, you know, of course, provide some visual effects. And so uh, uh, the what we should do in our mind, or we can also do very easily with some tools, uh, is to think, uh, and maybe also in exploring, think about a website uh, in black and white or in grayscale. Okay, and so the question is, uh, uh, is all the information already available here in the black and white version? Uh, if the real version was really black and white, are we missing something? Uh, you see that uh, uh, here we have two different colors, uh, one and two, and uh, the difference in colors uh, is also preserved here, one and two. Mm -hmm. So uh, we chose colors, uh, and they make uh, you know, some, some very strong visual cues. Uh, but uh, even if we are removing the colors and only leaving the, the luminance level, the grayscale version, we still see the difference. Mm -hmm. So this is important because uh, uh, also maybe people who are not seeing colors correctly or in some conditions where uh, the colors that they see on my screen it, are not exactly uh, equal to the colors uh, that you see in your screen due to different uh, variations of the of the screen qualities, for example, or maybe if, when you are, you know, uh, I remember when we were uh, designing some very careful uh, illustration, and then we are showing them in the projector in the classroom, and then all the colors were washed up uh, basically by the quality of the projector. And so, uh, but the the luminance uh, level, so darker or or lighter attributes will remain even if we are, you, you, are, you have some risk of losing the color. So it's important that information can be embedded in the, in the darkness or uh, lightness of the elements. And then we paint those with some colors, okay? And uh, so the information should be, the website should be uh, possible to navigate and the important, uh, the highlights, for example, this one is an highlighted, uh, here stands out very clearly because it's blue uh, when all the all the other text uh, is uh, is gray, but even here, even black and white, it still stands up, stands out. Okay, so it's a good design in this case. This other design, in a way, is less, uh, uh, you know, uh, survives uh, doesn't survive so so well hmm, when we are we're moving to a black and white uh, version. For example. Here we say that there's quite a distinctive sign of the Polytechnic website that marks it with different colors, one, two, three, four, five, uh, different areas of the website. Then it, it will not do that consistently, but this, uh, this is another topic. Uh, the problem with, with these colors that they, they, they differ mainly on the hue, okay, on the tint. And they don't differ so much on the luminance level. So when you go, go to, um, to black and white, you see that this color is actually the same as this one, and also these two are actually the same. Why this one is only a bit darker than the others, but so you don't get the the impression of having the five sections uh, with five color marks uh, because uh, um, the the lightness uh, actually is uh, is the same. So it's something that you are we are we are missing a chance uh, to reinforcing. Uh, structuring of the website. And about palettes, uh, uh, this, for example, is the official palette of Politecnico di Torino, uh, for which all the official documents and slides and websites and so on should use uh, uh, this set of colors. Okay. There are not only two colors, because there are two colors plus a list of variations, uh, depending on whenever you are you know, creating a more transparent or more washed up versions. You have two types of blues, uh, two types uh, or uh, three of oranges, and then all the variations of those. And this should be the official colors to, that may be used. And when you're 
uh, pairing them. So for example, you are using one for the text and the other for the uh, for the captions, for example, or for the background, uh, you should use them in pairs. So this one should always be paired with that, this one, and this other should could be paired with that other one, and so on. Okay. So in this case, all the the first column is always the same color that when is matched with the different variations of the second color, and so on. So this is just an example, one page with instructions for the designers to to create. Uh, uh, consistent, uh, uh, say, material, consistent visuals uh, for with it uh, for the Polytechnical, uh, say, corporate image, official image. Uh, um, then probably we are there. Not there are probably a lot of parts in which uh, these rules uh, are not really followed. Mm -hmm. And if you are this again, designing a color palette is a very difficult uh, job and uh, requires special skills and so again we can copy so like we inspired ourselves with some uh, uh, text styles uh, there's uh, this website so called color lovers and that collects uh, a lot of uh, uh, you know um, resources about colors so for example we have a, a big collection of palettes that are created by designers and they are shared so you can choose your own. There are patterns. They're not very uh, much useful in the web. But there are individual colors and, and so on, shapes that you can use. So all the visuals that are being produced by this community and shared. And so if you want to browse the palettes for your website, uh, you can have uh, uh, you know the the new, the most loud ones, so the ones that were most uh, uh, you know, voted uh, positively by by the, the community, and so you can inspire yourself and say, okay, I want to have a, a website which has uh, uh, maybe a, a, a blue component, uh, and so we can probably use this one and see that there are. If I choose the palette, it will tell me what are the colors that are involved and all the information about the individual colors. Okay, so you say. Uh, you can you can then download all the information about this specific uh, uh, this specific set of colors and use that in your application, okay, or others and so on, okay. And you can also so uh, you know there are some resources that are being created by other designers. So this one is okay as as a different, uh, but. Uh, Okay, I had the problem with the mic, but probably is is working okay now. Um, uh, what I was saying is that uh, uh, we have a, a, um, several resources that have been created by by designers, and we can just uh, pick the colors and use them in our application. And we know they no, they fit well together; they were already uh, been designed to work together. Or uh, you could also, if you feel uh, you know, uh, brave. You could also design a palette, and there are some tools here for helping you. Just uh, I, I don't want to to to, to do that. I'm, it's not my, you know, my skill to do that. But uh, uh, just to to see uh, what kind of information uh, color designers are using. So if I'm choosing a color, for example, this one, okay, uh, the tool is already showing me all the similar colors, all the variations of the colors. So I can match or mix this color with this one, with the other one. So I want maybe to add this one, uh, move to this one and add it here. And then we have a second color that may be this, this which is connected. I see them together or they don't fit too well. So maybe this one is better or whatever. Okay, so uh, we, we can explore a color and their neighborhood uh, quite easily. And they put together some colors that are that you know, visually uh, related. Okay, so we, we don't put a, a together uh, colors that are just randomly chosen. Okay, they should have a um, and this is a, a simplified version of this uh, much more complex uh, interface uh, that really gives you. You see that uh, you choose a color and it gives you some shades. Uh, 
automatically of the same color. So how the color is diluted, how you can create automatically um, or the complementary color. So whenever you choose a color, you will always uh, seek for the complementary one. So you see the uh, yellow and blue combination, which is very often used, uh, the brown and blue one also, uh, the red and the aqua combination, which is very strong. So it's, it's not very much used. Uh, um, and and you see that uh, you know, this color combination are sometimes used, uh, or three colors which are equally spaced, so we can be sure uh, that they are easy to distinguish, okay, easy to separate. And you see uh, RGB is the key, the starting point of all the color. But uh, you see that there are a lot of combinations that maybe we we recognize uh, in palette. So there are just say theories of colors. Uh, that will tell us uh, uh, what are some possibilities. So there's one main color and two complementary ones that are similar among themselves, but are opposite to the to the main one and so on. So there are tools that will help us and will help the designers you know, in finding a good set of colors, uh, or in some cases, uh, they also help you in extracting a palette from a picture. So if, if you are designing your website around the concept, around the picture, around the background, then you could have uh, the colors from this picture extracted. So it's, of course, it's a long, uh, it's a long task. It's not easy uh, to do, and it requires special skills. skills. But at the end, uh, the, the final result is a, a color combination that you may use actually um, also in your website, okay? And uh, okay, this was just one of the resources that they wanted to show, and um, uh, many others, but this is very famous. And uh, there are also tools, especially for uh, helping you to maintain this black and white uh, perception, this uh, uh, easing you to create um, select colors that. Uh, um, uh, give you a good reading uh, uh, in the foreground and background mode. Hmm? What I'm saying is that, uh, for example, if my uh, uh, application has a white background, what kind of color should I use? Okay, and there are some different colors, uh, and uh, um, we may uh, measure how much this color is visible compared to its background. And there are formulas and there are also uh, some uh, applications that when I select a, a color will tell me how uh, which other colors have an, a strong enough contrast uh, uh, with that one. So I can use one for the foreground, for example, the, the text color and the background color should have a strong contrast. I can choose the colors I like, but they should not be too close to each other in terms of lightness, basically. And uh, it's not just uh, the black and white uh, lightness level, because the, the perception of the colors by the eye is different. Some colors are perceived more than others. And so there are you know, formulas that will help us to com compute what, the, for example, this website calls uh, the, uh, the, the contrast ratio. Uh, so for example, if you go to this website, uh, you choose a background color, so maybe white is a good uh, starting point, uh, and it will help you generate uh, a palette of possibilities. The text is starting black, but if I want to write text in blue, there are uh, a lot of uh, uh, possibilities, and it will tell you, you see that one, when I choose different blue colors, this current ratio is, is updated. So uh, right now, uh, of course, you have better scores if the color is darker and uh, worse scores the, if the color is, is lighter. And, uh, and here I have all the information for using the color, okay, the color code. But if I want to change the background, for example, and have uh, maybe a, a, a or an orange background, You see that, uh, uh, for example, why is that? This uh, uh, combination of the blue, the previous blue that I had before, with the current uh, um, orange uh, is very bad. No, it tells you, okay, this is not good. This is not enough. Uh, so if uh, something is barely enough, uh, but something else is not. So it depends. Uh, 
sorry, on the combination of the two. And of course, there are other combinations. Uh, for example, all the dark yellows uh, uh, are more readable. Uh, and uh, we can see them if something is more readable than something else. Uh, um, but uh, uh, th there are numbers uh, that are able you know, enable us to uh, to measure this uh, this difference. Hmm? Uh, how, how it visible? Hmm? And there is also um, a a three uh, level. So there are different levels uh, concerned with accessibility. We'll talk about accessibility uh, later on. For people who may have some, uh, um, say, disabilities in in the perception of, of the website uh, or or the colors or the content, uh, and so will also tell us uh, how the, how accessible is our choice of colors. So it's not just nice, but it's uh, it turns well when you go when you're printing something. Like maybe, for example, it goes black and white and it can be red, or where uh, when the light is not so strong, or um, okay. And in you know, other combinations, uh, you can you could strive for you know a very big uh, ratio. Uh, of course, it becomes uh, black and it's not so nice. But if you go to a color that may look nicer, then you you know that uh, your contrast level is lower. So it's always a, a very difficult uh, balancing of different requirements, uh, uh, having something that is nice to see but it's also easy to read at the same time. And for example. Uh, Google Chrome uh, suggests you this palette. Okay, that is the palette that Chrome is using uh, um, internally uh, on its interface, and uh, um, and it's also suggesting if you want to create, for example, extensions or plugins. Uh, uh, these are the set of colors uh, with the uh, intended meaning, with the intended semantics. Hmm? Uh, I see that Andrea is suggesting as uh, another website. Okay, which uh, uh, okay we can. It's another type of interface, so it's changing the hue, saturation, lightness, which are the three components of colors. You change the color and we change the background, and uh, it's good to see that we have this fail or pass. Okay, fail. So what say here would fail say don't use this combination. When it goes to large, it means that you can use this combination if uh, the text is very large. So you see that this one is easy to read, and but this one is difficult. No? These colors fight with each other basically. And uh, once you go with more A's, you are getting more points. Uh, of course, this combination that they just get got at random is very, very ugly actually. Um, okay, this one is better, and we have a very high contrast and good combination of colors, maybe. Okay, so uh, of course, this requires people who really have the color wheel in their mind because uh, knowing how to move the, the use. Uh, so, probably here we have the reds, and then we have the blue. The, in the middle, we have the blues, uh, the greens, uh, and, f and uh, maybe, for example, obtaining a yellow is very difficult. You must know that you may probably saturate more I don't know okay so okay see is in this there in this area if I want to get a yellow and of course I will need a, a darker background uh, to make it stand out okay with a with a good uh, uh, with a good uh, number okay uh, it's not it's less visual it's more immediate uh, but um, again uh, we have numbers we have scores that will tell us whether this combination is strong enough to be uh, to be visible and to be easily distinguishable. Thank you, Andrea. And uh, I will add it to the slides. Okay. Uh, so uh, coming back to our uh, Politecnico, uh, you are uh, already familiar, no? probably, with this kind of interface, uh, and uh, that plays a lot of uh, on on colors. Okay. All the um, interface for uh, for um, booking uh, class presence, uh, your presence in class, uh, uh, plays with colors. Okay, and this is an, again an example of how not to use colors, right? Why not? First of all, the colors are not uh, um, self-describing. If you didn't have this uh, uh, legend here, you wouldn't would not really be able. 
to understand what, what uh, what's the difference between the green and the blue, for example, because both have positive colors. Okay, and uh, and so uh, also the gray. What does it mean, and so on? So it's explained here, but it's already when you need to explain something, it's already a failure. Okay, like when you are telling a joke to somebody, if they, you have to explain the joke, then the joke didn't go right. Okay. Um, and, and and the same is for with the, with design. If you need to explain something, then it's a design failure. Okay, um, the explanation should be there, and we see in the in the heuristic that we should always provide help and explanation, but not uh, as a precondition for understanding what is happening. So the first failure is this one. The second failure is that uh, uh, these boxes here are really hard to decode. Okay, so. What does it mean? It seems that we have a time slot, 9 to 13, so it's four hours long. And the first impression I got here is that we are filling the slot. There's a lot of interfaces where you have a space, and then the space is filled up to here, and then it will be more filled more, and so on. Like 70%, 80%, 90%. When you're buying tickets, for example, you have in many websites, you have sliders, or you have maps that fill more when there are more bookings. And and so we have, a, and this is reinforced by the combination of coupled colors. This is a, a, a sort of a red, and this is another variation of the same color. So two colors that are related, one is stronger and the other is lighter. So one is the foreground and the other is the background. One is the value and the other is the container. Huh? Actually, it doesn't work like this because of this, uh, the, the size of this box never changes. The number of the field value is just represented by these numbers. So there is no... Um, the first impression that you see uh, when I open this, I think, okay, all of these are just at 25% capacity. No, actually, you have to, to look at the numbers and you see that the red ones, uh, oh, the red ones is, uh, cannot be booked. Uh, why? Because it's full. So probably if I wrote full, uh, it would be better. Always try to use positive words and not negative words. Uh, and this one, this blue one, is uh, still uh, uh, open for booking. But we need to be careful with the number because the only one is left. Okay, so we there's not there's no visual indication that you need to hurry because uh, it's is nearly full. Okay, there's no graduality in that. Um, and uh, and so my my real question <laughs> is why did they choose two colors? Okay, at this point, just make all the box in the same color, one or the other. There's no reason to split them in two in this way. The, this splitting two doesn't give you any information. It only lets you think that there should be some information and you are not understanding it. Hmm? You are using different colors, but uh, there is no different meaning between the two colors. And by the way, you are not using the double color to give a, a, an important information, which is the fill level, for example. OK, so I could uh, very easily understand why they do it this, in this way, uh, because they had uh, only the, the first uh, slot here uh, just with the text and the other are just uh, you know, in the HTML generation are just table cells. Uh, uh, but at this point, use the same background that you had for the first cell. Why not? So uh, again, you can use colors to make it nicer, but uh, in some cases, you can also, you can also make it uh, uh, more more confusing, eh? more difficult to understand. Uh, by the way, if I want to book something, I don't know where to click on this page. I don't know, but uh, there is no visual indication that maybe this uh, area is clickable and this is not. Hmm? There's not. Mm, so I, I would think that uh, if something is still uh, available, I can click on it and then book for myself. 
but there's no hint that we actually could click on the blue parts and could not click on the red ones. They are the same, not not even an, an underline or something that looks like a button or an icon. OK, so I'm, I don't know whether it's just for, for, for reading or if I can actually uh, modify or add a new booking on this on this page. Hmm. A, a little variation of colors or on text could really help us. OK, and uh, so when we put everything together, uh, we have now you know, and examined a lot of details. But if we try to put them together, uh, then we have another problem of uh, uh, helping the user to find paths and find their way uh, into a complex uh, set of uh, information. OK, uh, first of all, uh, navigation. Navigation means uh, enable the user to go from here to there. OK. Uh, they are maybe in the home page. They want to, I don't know, book a, a classroom for the next week, uh, and where they should go. Uh, you cannot, of course, have everything, fun every functionality in the home page at the beginning. So you should have a, a path made of one or more steps that will the, lead the user to the functionality that they are desiring in this moment. Uh, and you have uh, to give signals and signs and uh, suggestions to the users so that they can go into the, the right direction. And this applies this concept of guiding the users through a, a route that it doesn't know uh, at the moment. So you must guide them. Uh, it may apply at different levels. Uh, for example, uh, the most important is task navigation. Uh, so when you want to buy something you want to uh, you know, enter into a challenge, for example, there will be many uh, steps uh, that are needed for, for fulfilling the, um, the, the task for reaching the, the, your goal. And you must be sure that uh, the user knows uh, which, are, which is the correct task sequence and where to go, where to activate the different tasks. No? So for example, you have a procedure with step one, step two, step three, step four, you should always the user should know always know how to go forward, how to go backward, and to how to confirm and so on. And uh, or it's easier the web navigation. If I, I have a website with many pages, uh, um, where do I go to, for browsing different categories of different parts of the website? Uh, like uh, when you are navigating menus in a desktop application. So if I want to, I don't know, to to sort the elements on the table in uh, in Excel, where where should they go? Okay, should they go to format, to view, to uh, data menus, or whatever? So I should find my my information in the in the among the available options. Navigation has nothing to do with the with the visual elegance or the graphic and so on. It's mainly about uh, what is the content. Which are the options? So the menu items, the icons, and so on. And what is on them? What is written on them? Uh, what's, their, what's their meaning? So that, then they may be nicer or uglier. It's a separate issue. And of course, we prefer if they are nicer. nicer. But if they are very nice, but they are confusing, uh, we are not helping the user to navigate. So we uh, most uh, of our interfaces are devoted to navigation. So whenever we have a, a menu bar, we have a pop-up menu, we have some palette with icons, we have the ribbons in the, in the office and so on. It's all space, just imagine all the space uh, taking the application by all these navigation elements that are part of the application. And many cases, for example, here, this is just uh, a navigation page. Everything in this page uh, here is navigation in this case, because there are, it's a list of categories. And then you select a category, and then you find the uh, you find the activities you are looking for. So um, it's a, it's a, there's a big effort in the design of application and of websites in providing navigation clues around the page uh, and and inside also in the main content. In, like in this case, like we have this a long list of items uh, that are here, or it's a scrolling list, like in this case. Uh, by the way, how do I know that this list is crawling? So my idea is that this list may scroll and this other is complete, will not scroll. 
what is the visual indication for doing that? Or maybe I'm wrong, but the impression from these two scr uh, um, screenshots is that the left one can be scrolled. I I came to this impression because the last item is not complete. Yes, it's cut out. There's 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 something missing. So it goes beyond the border, and uh, so behind this this final border, there should be more. Okay, if you want to make it finish, you see that on, on the top here, we have a couple of pixels of gray. On the bottom here, we have no, no margin. And so having no margin will tell us that it's not finished. Like in this case, uh, everything is starts here and uh, finishes there. So you see, you have just a very, so the people will not try to scroll here, or if they scroll, they probably expect something to come up from the bottom here and not from not from from the middle there uh, in this case people are encouraged to scroll hmm? uh, or to, to tap on the on the top here one two three four and in this case this button is complete so my view says that there is no season five for this show uh, in the right design there is a uh, okay there's a gray bar here yes i, I agree uh, and uh, it's not uh, so probably that, what is this telling me this bar here that probably here we had a title like this one that has been scrolled up hmm? so probably i i don't know because i don't i don't have the, the whole image but probably here we have a, a title like this title here other activities uh, uh, and that has been scrolled up in a way but uh, the whole page will scroll probably, not the list, uh, the list of items, right? In this case, we are telling us that you, we are telling the user that this section here will scroll separately from the rest of the page. So just by putting an image which is not finished, uh, you, you cut it a bit, uh, a little bit before, and you're telling the user, remember one of the gestalt principles was sequences. Hmm? And so uh, if something is not complete, then it should continue because it cannot just finish that, like that, okay? There should be a, a real closing. Of course, seeing that interactively we would, uh, would uh, resolve our issues, but uh, most of, our, of the design is uh, letting the user understand before trying to use them. Hmm? Um, and uh, many of these navigation items are discoverable in some way. So we see them and we understand them. We see this, uh, you know, back button here, the back button there. We expect to be there in all iPhone applications. It should be there, for example, not in Android, for example. Uh, but they are visible. And some of them, so, uh, some of them are not visible at all. So, uh, for example, we have a lot of shortcuts and gestures uh, that are quicker. Uh, so, for, for example, uh, you, you, you are very quick, um, quicker than me with the, all the social media applications. So you know how to do a reply and a forward and to ping a message and so on, uh, all with uh, some movement. But uh, I, for example, I can never remember if, if for replying to something I need to swipe left or swipe right. Uh, or basically in different applications, uh, the conventions are different, okay? Or if you have to long long press to make a long tap or a double tap on an item for for um, for adding a star or adding a bookmark, or a bookmark to that item. There is no general rule. There's no uh, external consistency that will tell us that, okay, when you swipe left, you are always replying or you're always deleting. And when you swipe right, you always forward. For example, for me, it's much more intuitive replying to the left and forwarding to the right. But it seems that, uh, for example, uh, WhatsApp just uh, decided that to reply, you need to go right. And okay, there's no... Uh, the problem here is that you, you need to know this gesture, you need to know that you could use these gestures, and you need to know what they do. Uh, uh, then when you, of course, when you learn the application, you will, will, will be 
much faster because you in a, just a swipe or just a tap uh, you can do something that other people would require uh, two or three selections but they're not uh, discoverable in, in any way hmm. um, and and uh, probably they should be designed for advanced users so, so not all the navigation should be uh, say uh, just obtainable by this kind of gestures so this should be in the category of shortcuts so everything can be done with the normal navigation element visible to the user but in addition we may have shortcuts if you do that uh, if you maybe do a double swipe left, uh, then you are deleting everything, whatever. Hmm? And uh, and then the, the user will probably learn them, uh, um, you know, uh, step by step. And also, uh, probably there are some conventions uh, that should be everywhere. For example, the the resize uh, gesture. Okay, if you are pinching something, you are enlarging it. Uh, uh, there are some applications where this is not possible, okay? And you know, it's really irritating because maybe you want to magnify a picture, you cannot, it doesn't work. Hmm? And it should work because this is a normal gesture. Why are not, uh, what I am not allowed uh, no, to, to enlarge this picture? Hmm? I should maybe open it with, uh, with a browser and then enlarge in, in the browser. So it's a very annoying uh, effect. So wisely, wisely choosing which uh, shortcuts and which gestures you should, uh, should uh, support uh, is, is not so easy as all design activities. But they are also, of course, uh, shortcuts for navigating to different functionalities. And then we have all the normal uh, navigation function, like uh, all the forms uh, uh, for selecting one item, for selecting a group of items, uh, all the menus, the ribbons, the palettes, and so on. In, in desktop application, again, you see that uh, the, the content is only this part here, the main window. Oh, sorry. My fingers always go everywhere. They shouldn't. Why are you doing this? I, I cannot. I don't know what brings the, this pen in this mode where. OK, so this is the main content, basically. Yeah, no, not today. Uh, but we have uh, uh, all this part here. And so the first block here. No. Here. And all this part there is just for navigation. In top is navigation about the functions. And on the left, we, is, we have navigation along the content of the document. Huh. So uh but uh, i probably 40 percent of the space uh, is for navigating plus some ex extra space when we are opening a menu that will of course uh, overlay the, the current content so that's the importance of having a complex application with require also space uh, for accessing all the functions and the same is uh, for example in website uh, uh, the main navigation is usually in the forms of menus or categories and these menus could be uh, listed uh, and very visibly at the beginning of the page or at the left of the page, or could be in some way hinted by, a, by an icon when the space is constrained. And uh, so we expect people to be able to open the menu. Okay, uh, It's quite strange to have the menu on the right hand side of the window, usually it should be on the left hand side. So this is not very, uh, very let's say, consistent with the many other applications. But it's there, it's recognizable with the hamburger. Uh, it's also a shortcut for, for pulling up the menu in that, ca in that case. Um, and this is just for, for the menu. Uh, menu are used for uh, organizing the content uh, in, your, in your application. And uh, it's not easy to organize them in a meaningful way, in a meaningful structure, uh, so that the user can understand very easily which is the menu uh, that will contain the results uh, for what they are searching, for what you are querying. In many cases, uh, uh, the navigation structures that we have are hierarchical. So a set of menus on different levels, uh, and at every level we are more uh, more detailed. Uh, like for example, this is an example of a shopping website uh, where we see that we have uh, uh, one first uh, 
level which is the type of shop so there's the main shop the outlet and uh, and other functionalities which are not related to the shopping then we have the category so so it's the first level actually of content we have the titles which are the second level and the, the uh, items which are the third level of uh, of, uh, of the navigation so it's a hierarchy three levels deep um, and in this case uh, most of it most of this hierarchy is shown on the screen if you go to amazon the hierarchy is so, so large so complex which is that is never shown the, uh, completely on the screen and you should uh, uh, um, it should be consistent in your choice so, for example, we see that the, the first level category is about uh, the type of sports that you want to, to do. Camping, climbing, cycling, fitness, run, pedal, snow. And then there's a break here because it changes. Travel is not a sport anymore. OK, it could be an activity. So, OK. It's a strange, okay? It doesn't fit re really well with the others. And then we have men, winning, women, and kids. So wait, uh, what does it mean, men, and women, and kids? So men, but if I want to cycle for men, uh, if I need some, uh, uh, you know, uh, something to wear for cycling, and then my man, should I go to cycle or should I go to men? And the same, if I want to buy some uh, mountain bike for, uh, for, for children, should I go under kids or under bikes? You see a kid's bikes here under cycle. And so what will be under kids? So uh, we, are, we don't have a, a really clean hierarchy here. There are several hierarchies, one about the sports type, one about the persons, and uh, uh, they, are, they couldn't decide which one should be on the top, so they put all of them. But now we don't know where to find the elements. Hmm. So it could be different navigation structures. So you could enter by sport or you could enter by type of user, and then you find uh, the same elements. And so I would like to see two different menus. For example, one uh, you know, one here with the sports, uh, with the different sports, and one top uh, like men, women, and kids. So you select women, and then you then you select uh, the, the sports because they are two different dimensions. In this case, they try to put everything together, so it it became confusing. Because you like you have a dictionary, you don't know anymore if it's in alphabetical order or, or in chronological order. Because some parts are in one order and some parts are in another order. So you don't know where to find uh, your information. And it doesn't end here. Footwear, again, is another category. Footwear for men, for women, for running, who knows? Uh, and uh, you have the, the the failure indicator when you have a more or other or something else uh, it means that actually <laughs> you are not uh, you don't have a good category because you, there are some items that even you as the content creator you don't know where to put them so imagine if the, your users could find them or not hmm? so it's not uh, uh, all of this uh, it's a designing the category is a discipline on itself uh, in, it's a discipline which is called, uh, we don't have uh, time to, to deal with that uh, in this course, uh, but it's called information architecture. Designing how to describe the organization of information, or in this case, the, the, the organization of, uh, of objects, of items, uh, uh, in a consistent way is totally not easy, not easy. And uh, there are methods uh, to do that. There are books to study to to, to understand how to do that. Uh, but again, for us, it, it's uh, it boils down 
in the human computer interaction field it boils down to an unclear navigation i know where i want to go i want to buy some uh, running shoes for, for my children well i don't i'm really lost i really don't know in which top level category i should go i could try to open some of them and see what's inside but it's a trial and error exploration it's not a clean no the street where i have the signs that they will tell me where i go where i should go uh, and there are some rules of course uh, but basically uh, they boil down to uh, defining some semantic rules some meaning some uh, common uh, reasonment uh, for uh, deciding how to organize the menu not just put something together but having the rule and that will tell us okay the first level deals with this choice the second level deals with the different choice and so on don't uh, use too many levels uh, three is actually near to the to the maximum that uh, people can understand so it's better to have a broad menu rather than a very deep menu uh, and uh, remember that all the possibilities should be covered so all the possibility in a non-overlapping way okay so men and footwear are overlapping they uh, they there are some items which are in common between the two so they are not not good as different menu items in the same in the same menu hmm? uh, um, and so on and if i have this category how should i order them hmm? so normally uh, the elements should be grouped by or order or listed by uh, by similarity uh, if uh, i have i don't know if i have to choose between the 12 months january february march i will list them in this order and not in alphabetical order unless there is no logical order and then at that point i will use an alphabetical one so i always ask myself what is the order in which the user is remembering this information? Uh, in this example, uh, we had a sort uh, of uh, alphabetical order. You see C, 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 F, R, P, S, T. So up to here, we have an alphabetical order. And then everything goes <laughs> astray. So. And uh, this is, a, is an important part. Uh, keep the order of items uh, fixed. So if you see the item in some order, then any other time you are showing those items, try to show them in the same order. And there's something that uh, is uh, very important. I don't know if you are using speed, uh, okay, for your identity, uh, for connecting to the Polytechnic website or to other websites. Uh, of course, the the eating app that you have for for spending your money and so on. Uh, requires you to use the speed uh, authentication okay and it's a uh, very bad because of course you know that the, the speed authentication has different providers so when you click on uh, login with speed with on the login with speed button you get a list of all the different providers so it could, could be team could be uh, post italiane could be clt could be uh, info chart and so on okay and you choose your provider some intelligent person let me call it in this way decided that they should not make any favors for any of these providers okay there should not be a provider which is always on the first place and some other provider which is always in the second place because that would be favorable to the first one so they implemented a sort of equity in their mind in their rotten mind they say, okay, it's more um, equal for everybody. We are not favoring anyone. So they are not fighting for going to the first position or whatever, because every time the order of these items is random. Every time you log to a website, the order of this item is different. They explicitly randomize it, which is totally nonsense from the usability point of view, totally. Okay, because every time you have to look through all the lists to find your own provider, you're losing time and you are always feeling like, oh, what's strange? I came here yesterday, it was different. Today, it looks different. What, what changed? 
did they do something wrong or did they do something be different before? Because the result is different. We, we learned that if we do the same actions today and tomorrow, you, we should get the same result. In this case, no. The system is fighting against us, fighting against our uh, attempt as, as a, uh, to a consistent explanation because they are shuffling the content every time. So for a principle that is totally useless, uh, because I, I could understand this when you are signing up for a new service. So we have different providers and you know the official public website doesn't want to favor one service over another. I could understand that. But once you have signed in, when you log in, you already have your identity. It's not that you are uh, deciding to switch to another one. You already know which are, which is your identity. So it's better to know that, okay, mine is always in the third position or for the mine, I have to scroll to the bottom because they, can, they are always listed hear me in alphabetical order. Okay, so something that could be a good intention was transformed in a bad design. Uh, this is another hierarchy, again, about the, okay, this is the, the news of the year, not having to, to book for access in the classrooms. And let's have a look at, at this tool. Uh, so we have uh, a, a, let, a, set, a set, sorry, of possible uh, items to reserve and to book. You click on one of these, and we have a second uh, screen that will uh, show for example i clicked on uh, Aula studio i have a second selection uh, with a list of the Aula studio and if i click on one of these uh, Aula studio i have the uh, schedule of the of the places that are still available uh, what is wrong with this i see at least uh, two elements that are wrong one is that uh, when I open the second level here, there's no change on the first level. So if I click on Aula Studio, I would want this area to be selected, to be highlighted. Okay. So when I here, they are all the same. When I click on Aula Studio, let me go back here. Uh, I want this to change color, for example, or to show that it's the currently highlighted one. And so this is a is a detail related, sorry, is a detail related to that one. There's nothing here, just clear. Just have a look at the screen. There's nothing that will tell me that this detail is about the first or the second or third option. Well, actually, there is something. This text, Aula Studio, which is sorry, no, not this one. Aula Studio here which is the same text as this one, our studio there. But I need to read all of them and to do pattern matching with, with my eyes and also separating this pattern matching at the dash. Hmm? Say, okay, only the first part is equal. So therefore maybe I think it's all lost usability. Hmm? Uh, it should be a second problem. Uh, there is no visual indication that this is a level one and this is a level two because they are in the same color, the same shape. So my mind is telling me that they are at parallel level. They are at the same level, A and B, not one and two. The second does not belong to the first. The second is independent from the first. So, because visually they are the same, there is no reason the second should be less important than the first one or to be dependent from the first one. This is also reinforced by this, the usage of this symbol here. We are accustomed to the fact that when, when we are clicking on this symbol, the symbol will probably rotate down and will tell will open a sub menu with all the different options. Okay, normally these symbols are open and closed. It's a visual shortcut for saying this is a menu. When you click on me, I will open a sub menu here. So I I was imagining that all this part could be just inside here. 
when I click the Aula Studio button. No, it appeared below. So the first time I say, okay, I click in Aula Studio, nothing happens because on, on mobile, probably it will be shown outside your screen. And and the same goes also in the in the next uh, next uh, next screen the same rule that now we have level one, level two and we know that Aula Studio should match with this Aula Studio, and then we have a level three which again visually is nothing different, and uh, okay Sala Studio Secondo Piano is this one, so it's this matches this and uh, this matches that. So it's a very indirect way of showing hierarchy. The hierarchy is there, but uh, the visual aspect makes no effort uh, for uh, helping us to understand it. Uh, a drop down list, Carlo, Carlo is suggesting for, I, I think, the second uh, level, what I was discussing before. Uh, yeah, there, there are ma many, uh, you mean a drop down list with all the possible options? See all, all the possible classrooms, all the possible, or just one list with everything. That could be one possibility if the everything is not too big. So in this case, it's, uh, probably I, I only tried it myself, and so I don't have the visual uh, the visualization for students. You also have all the possible classrooms, which is a, a large number. So only one list probably is too wide or too complex for uh, for showing all the options. And so but the idea of having three levels, uh, like uh, in, um, but using them like an accordion, when, when you select one level, it will expand and you show you the second level choices. It could be, it could be a good choice, especially if you have many options. Of course, you have a, a menu with three first level category. And when you select one, you have only two second level categories. Well, I'm questioning also, why do you need really to add one level? Okay, remember the principle. It's better to have a way wide level than a deep hierarchy. So uh, if we had maybe we have two Aula Studio, one biblioteca, and one secretaria, why not make just one list of uh, four elements or five? Maybe the secretaria you have two or three different options. Why? Well, okay, but it's just a list of five or six. So all of this was not uh, really needed. Okay, and uh, again, if imagine we are in the last uh, screen here, and in this condition, I click on Biblioteca. What should it happen? I don't know. Okay, so the answer could be you can't. The Biblioteca link is uh, uh, forbidden because you would need first to close this second level or and close to the first level, maybe. Or maybe you just close everything and just open the, the second level menu about uh, the, the library. We don't know. There's nothing that is telling us uh, uh, whether these items are still clickable or not. And there's nothing that will tell us how to close the second and third level uh, menus that have been displayed. All the functions are there, okay? The, the, we have everything that is needed. Just that we have to learn a new way of using this because it goes against or just ignores all the convention that we are expecting. It uses a symbol for the sub menu for an accordion that will expand without expanding. Um, and all of these links, it uses different levels, but showing them in the same way. No? For example, this here, the first and second and third levels were shown with different fonts. Stronger, less strong, very light. And here we have all the same fonts, the same colors, the same layout. Hmm? So let's not do these mistakes. I don't want to criticize all these people, of course, but uh, uh, which, because it's something that we are using every day, it's uh, it's easier not to find the mistakes or find the problems. Um, and, and, the, and if I have a long list, uh, how could I organize the content of this list? Uh, so imagine the selector for the fonts in our uh, in, a, in a word processing program. 
what is a good ordering of the fonts uh, in your program? Uh, you see that the Microsoft came out of it with a with a very good solution. Okay, we have the main list here. Actually, when you open the font list, uh, you have uh, let's say one, two, and three sections, and these are clearly sections because there's a divider line. Okay, I don't want to. I think. I, I will skip this this first one because actually it's another functionality that is embedded here. It's not so nice. But about the fonts, you have a section three that contains all of them in alphabetical order. We have section two that contains the recently used in alphabetical uh, in this is not alphabetical order a a t b in a time order. The most frequent are on the top. And uh, the first one are the one belonging to the style. So the, the fonts that are predefined for the current document. So we have three lists, remember, with three different criteria. Here, we also had three lists, uh, uh, sport, men and women, footwear. But they were all together, all mixed together. Here we are not mixing them because each list has their own uh, section. It's separated from the others. So our brain is telling these are three different uh, blocks of information. We are expecting uh, it's normal that the same font will happen in more than one section. Okay, and we choose which uh, which uh, section to use. Do we want to choose uh, a font uh, among the predefined ones for the document from the styles? Do we want to choose a font that we just used recently? Or do we want to choose to explore and choose a new, a totally new font, which is different from the recent ones? Once we made the choice, then all the information is available there. So this is a, it's a good design uh, where when, when we have the long list and uh, we have no clue about which font uh, the user is searching for, we put them in alphabetical order. When we have a short list of the of something which is clearly in the mind of the user, because he just used those very recently in the same document, then we can list the the, the latest one at the top and the others just in decaying order of time. Okay, uh, Bauhaus is the last one because they, you you were using it more time ago than the other ones. Okay, so it gives you a, a time decay of the. And also, there's a very strong, in this case, a visual option of previewing. In this case, it's possible to preview the look of the of the font that will help you, of course, recognizing one font across uh, across uh, maybe hundreds of them. Of them. Uh, this list is scrollable, and we have a hint for telling us that we may scroll or we may and we may expand this list. So there are a lot of small details that make uh, very it's very easy uh, to to use this uh, this list of fonts. Um, and in general, uh, it's uh, we are trying to satisfy the the uh, the wish of uh, getting information that the user has. Okay, users uh, some people say that they are informers that they feed with information. And so they can smell where information is and try to follow the smell in order to find the information they want. And so we have to design our content, but around our content, we put a lot of smells that will hint. Uh, we create menus, so we create breadcrumbs for the navigation. We use colors for coding the different types of content. We use icon for helping selecting the common and so on, just to make it easier to find this information. And avoiding that the users uh, stay there and look at the options and don't have a clear idea about uh, which options they are um, they are choosing. And you can detect this so that we have a poor information sent uh, when the user stopped looking at the page uh, at the content for too long. There's something wrong if because they couldn't they can't make their mind their mind, or they are doing some action but they are not sure. Okay. So we say, okay, may, maybe I click this one. 
No, if you are letting a user speak aloud when they're using an application, they will tell you that. Okay, I try to do this, not I'm executing mm -hmm. that. And if people are using too much the back button, try something. Oh, it's not what you wanted. They go back. Let's try. Let's try <clears throat> another option. Then it's also an indication of a bad design. No? Uh, let's go back to this classical page, which is probably one of the worst designed pages in the world. Uh, but not not real. But um, uh, this page is trying to tell us something. Okay, it's clearly. A navigation page. You come here and you have a lot of options. They are trying to make an attempt to classify these options in groups. And these groups are uh, denoted by uh, containers, okay, the blocks and the colors. So we have different containers with the same colors. We are expecting that they should contain similar items not so similar as the different items inside the same box, uh, but quite similar and more similar than the items across different colors. Huh? So this is what is we are seeing. By the way, the colors here, this blue is similar to this blue. This orange is similar to this orange, and uh, but they have nothing to do with each other. So they are recalling a, a, a color, or maybe, uh, but uh, with a different meaning. And so this is very dangerous. We are redefining the meaning of the color inside the same page. But the problem happens uh, when you try to click uh, on each of these boxes. So I tried this uh, last year. So, so a couple of these pages have changed in the, in the meantime, but uh, the, the idea is the same. There's no consistency in design here. In this page all looks similar. It's a very well organized, probably. I don't know. We, we, we must read the text. But if you click on similar boxes, you get to completely different pages with different uh, visual styles. So this A and A and A are, have the same boxy style as the previous page. And then we have B and B that have a different style, similar to each other, but different. They exploit similar colors. They also have this, uh, for example, the B pages have a background logo of the Polytechnico in the, behind the colors. OK, there's some sort of consistency, except uh, this red and this red here mean don't have the same meaning they're just random this blue here is the same as this blue but they are actually not related in any way so there is no lesson that we can learn about the usage of colors there's no consistency in the colors every time it's used in a different way and so we are just learning that the color is just a noise because there's no uh, reinforcement of that OK, uh, and then it's also more confusing about this other B, as I call it B prime, because it uses different colors. Uh, why? There's no reason, probably just people picked up these colors without any any real thought. But even worse, probably, is the A blocks, uh, where the layout is similar to the previous page, but the meaning of the colors is different. So, for example, here we have uh, we have orange boxes here. We click on this orange box uh, here, and we get three other orange boxes plus a, a red one, a, a blue, and a, and a yellow. So, does this blue is this blue in some way connected with these blues? Of course not. Even if it is the same color and the same shape. So uh, really, this just creates confusion because the layout is constantly changing. The interpretation of colors is constantly changing. The colors are the same. So in some way, they are trying to reinforce. We are using a consistent color palette. Yes, but we are not them. You are not using it with a consistent semantics. Uh, we have colors here. 
yellow, red, and green, and that are the same colors that we find in this menu there. Of course, with different meanings. Hmm? So you see, there's the users uh, on every web page. They have to learn a new, a new way of interaction. They have to learn a new, let's say, convention for understanding colors. And so the, the, there's no navigational flows. There are a lot of, uh, you know, quizzes at every page. It's a different quiz than you have to solve in order to understand where you have to go. This is an example of uh, our Polytechnic, but in many other websites. I see, I saw your Hall of Shame, for example. The many websites for public institutions have the same, uh, the same problem, share the same problems. Uh, this is an example of a survey website, which is much smaller, of course, the, of the Polytechnic website. But it's also confusing because, for example, they are using a lot of icons, but. Uh, for example, these icons for the tools here is the same as that one, uh, but they do completely different things. Uh, one is modifying the properties of, of, a, um, of a survey and the other is modifying the settings of the application. Or this group of users here and this group of users there are the same, but the first ones, the one at the top have, also have a key. What does it mean? We, we don't know. So using or reusing the same graphical elements without explanation uh, and it, with a different meaning in different places, it's always to something that should be avoided at all costs, basically. And especially using icons without uh, without an explanation. Um, if you have a look at uh, Microsoft, for example, they have a very clever usage of icons in, in the ribbon. For example, there are some icons that don't need any explanations at all. B is for bold, no explanation needed. Some icons that have an explanation text behind. So this is the common for paste. So maybe paste should be already familiar, but they decided to put the explanation the label behind the icon, okay? And the, also this one, which is a very, very difficult to read icon, you are more likely to understand the text than the icon itself, at least at the first uh, first times. So even if we are using the icon so that their color and the shape will help us no, in finding the, the, the position of, of, the, of the function that we need, there's also some training that we are doing. Especially, you see, these three icons look very, very similar. So they are different, but when you are doing something quick, really, you don't go to, or you don't want to, no, to be there and find the details, find the difference, like in the, in the, in the, in the games. And uh, and so the explanation besides each icon is uh, uh, it's the one that will drive you, you know, to 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 use the functions. And so all this reinforcement, okay, the same icon is used in the same way, but when it's not so obvious, then we have an explanation, just one word, just one label. And if you hover over it, there's a tooltip that will explain you more. So these combinations of all the redundant information will make it very easy. Uh, and also we have a categories here. All these icons be belong to these categories, all these icons belong to these categories and so on will help us understand the structure of the different functions and reach uh, all of them and understand each of them. Um, OK, another navigation element, of course, are the links uh, or the banners uh, or the selection of actions. Uh, and especially on the web, when we have a lot of space, uh, we should always uh, uh, try to exploit the space for not just uh, listing the name of the functions, but also having you know, one line of explanation that will help us disambiguate between the different meanings that a single word may have in the in, in the main menu, for example. Um, okay, I I want to, to spend the last five minutes. Uh, uh, this would be a nice exercise. So if you want, uh, uh, just try to do that. Uh, 
uh, this is a, is a message that I found again and some students shared with me uh, on the from the Polytechnic website uh, and uh, uh, maybe we can do that as an, as an exercise uh, next time uh, find uh, what is wrong with this uh, and I will tell you there's too many words there's too many text to read and to understand in order to understand what it means uh, and are we able are we capable or making the same or translating the same information into a more readable format hmm? but bef uh, before that uh, uh, I just want to share with you some really important information about uh, how people read online. So this is a study that Nielsen made, uh, uh, say, 20 years ago or more, more um, saying, okay, we have, we have the layout, we have the text, but at the end, when we have the real content, the article, the Wikipedia content or whatever, how do people read the, the content? So how can we structure the content so that it's easier to read? And the answer to this question was really expected or really shocking, depending on your point of view. People don't read. People don't read on the web. Nobody will read the content of your website or your page or your article or whatever. And to show that, to demonstrate that, uh, Nielsen used and the eye tracking technology Eye tracking is a sort of a technology that uses some cameras that you're putting close to the, or they are integrated in uh, with the monitor or close to the monitor. And these cameras are just observing your eyes and see where your eyes are looking and they are recording all your movement. So they're saying, okay, he's looking here and then it changes, it look there and then it look there and so on. So you have a, the, the full, set of movements that your eyes made on, on the image, you're recording this position and you are combining the observation for many users so that you know in the average where are the users looking. And what you can, what you can create is a sort of a uh, heat map, no? a map where uh, most of the eyes uh, you know, uh, uh, look on the page and it will become uh, less, uh, the, the color will become uh, less stronger when people are not looking. Okay. So we see that, for example, this is a Google result page. People are browsing the first uh, one, two, three results, and the rest of the page is basically ignored. Nobody looks there. Uh, there's this information box on the right, which, when it's present, is quite used because probably it's, in many cases it's linked to the first element. So people know that they found uh, useful information there. Navigation and nothing else. Wikipedia also, you people work basically, read the, basically the first words of the first paragraph and maybe the index, but they're not reading the real content. And so we have a lot of these uh, patterns which are F-shaped or E-shaped or T-shaped, where people read the top, the left, and maybe some content in the middle of a page, and the rest of the page is basically ignored. When it's too low or too in the right, you don't see it. So in a way, if you are designing a page for attracting information for the user, uh, you should put your content in the top left, and then the less important content around that uh, and uh, all the rest it will be less important and people will not look at it will not find it at, at first sight and uh, okay they are using that also in the advertisement industry this kind of techniques uh, now uh, for example uh, for the left hand side uh, picture the interesting part is that nobody ever looked at the product name okay they had something more interesting to look at for probably okay but uh, uh, after seeing this advertisement, the people don't know what is the product. While in this case, uh, they were, you see that the rebook uh, name is being visualized by the people. So, so it's a better design, the second one, because actually you can read, the, maybe you remember it or not, we don't know, but at least you read it. And also the logo is shown here as a sort of tattoo on the leg of the person. And uh, uh, so there are some parts of your content that people will never see and will never read. 
especially when people are already a, a task in mind. So if I have a travel book, a website, for example, and they want to book, buy a ticket, uh, in our mind, uh, uh, the web page, uh, we already know what we, we are searching. We are searching for booking a trip, for example, or booking a vacation. So it's the book that is attracting something. All the rest will not be visible to our brain. If somebody asks us what, what, what was in, in the second button, we don't know because our brain already wanted to book a ticket. And so we only saw and remembered those parts of the page that, was, uh, uh, that we understood they were fulfilling our goal. All the rest was not important at the moment, okay? And so uh, every user, when it comes to the website, only sees the portion of the website that they believe they satisfy their need. And uh, uh, to go further, uh, Nielsen also did a, a, a second experiment when they tried to take a text from a website and try to simplify it across uh, several steps. Uh, one is make it shorter, make it scannable. Scannable means you can browse it without reading every word because it's as a vertical uh, pagination uh, with the ballot items and so on. And uh, using neutral uh, language instead of uh, marketing language where everything should, should be fantastic. And or they try to combine all the, all the, all the options before. So, um, what the experiment was uh, how much uh, usable is uh, this usable in the sense in this case of readability and understandability so they let people read dif there's different uh, fragments of text uh, and then they ask what they did what they remembered and you see that the the, the final version which has only the facts uh, listed in a clean order as uh, more than twice uh, the usability than the first one the, the, the starting one so actually, it seems that you are dumbing things down. OK, you are just putting it. But actually, what you are helping people to get information. From this kind of text, that people will not get any information. We get less than half the information than they get from this kind of list. So actually, people are not reading web pages. They are scanning web pages. And we know, so we need to know that so that we uh, be, be put the important information above the fold, so in the first screenshot of the page. But of course, we cannot fix uh, um, put everything in the first um, screenshot of the page. So you must prioritize what are the most important content in your web page. You should put you you know what should you should be put in the top and the left part of the website where the people are expecting them and not where the people are expecting other type of content. Uh, by the way, um, if be also careful with trying to oversell information, and this is my last slide, um, people know where some type of content is new, normally expected. So for example, people know that in many websites you have ads, you have advertisements, like a banner in the top, like maybe some boxes on the right, some right column here. These are all, all advertisements in, the, in these websites. And look at the eye tracking study. Nobody ever looked once in any of the advertisements, never. Because our brain is already filtering them out. We don't even see that they are there. We are blind to banners. Okay, so all the people investing in uh, online advertisements should think about that, but they, they are trying to sort of ignoring the problem. If you have some banners that look like banners and are in the position where banners are usually, uh, they, the user, the people are not uh, seeing them. Even if they are uh, intrusive, okay, you know that they pop up and you know how to close them, but you don't even read them. You only just close them without reading them. So people really, uh, the people's brain are, are a very good ability of filtering irrelevant items. And this is also a lesson for us. Never create something which looks like a, ban a banner. So if you want to provide a, a very important information to your users, don't put it at the top 
with strong colors uh, and maybe some animation or blinking something. No, because the brain of the people will automatically classify that as a banner, even if it's a very important notice. Okay, uh, the building is on fire. That you should not write uh, write it in a way that could look like a banner, because people will just uh, not see it. Hmm? Actually, they are filtering it out, not looking at it. Huh? So before looking. Our brain is already analyzing the whole image and is telling us which are the important parts of the page to look at. And uh, so the, the part which are strong colors and they are a visual that is different from the rest of the page are automatically excluded because we are classifying them as non-interesting parts. They are banners. We have the, the experience of them. So there's a lot of information here. There's a lot of tricks, a lot of experience. Uh, in order to come out with a, with a good design. We don't have a rule for good design. We have some hints, uh, some suggestions uh, at uh, what are the errors or the mistakes that we may make. And next week, we will see it more uh, with some more practical rules uh, to detect the mistakes uh, by ourselves uh, or with the help of other users that we, we can use to, to test our proposals. So uh, next week we will try to to with the heuristics uh, uh, rules uh, to uh, analyze with a critical eye with a set of rules uh, a given design and so to find the errors that now belong to to the different categories that we already uh, found while uh, um, analyzing exploring the design steps. So uh, I said we 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 try to do only three hours uh, about the design it's uh, every each one of these topic would be you know uh, one course by itself uh, we're trying to pick some of them especially try to uh, build uh, some sensitivity in you when you are uh, visiting the websites uh, and try to pick up the suggestion this is good this is bad um, in two weeks we'll make uh, an exercise where we'll we'll try to analyze uh, in the view of the rule of visual design and the view of the evaluation heuristics, uh, your hall of fame or uh, all of shame. Uh, so if you want, you can pick up your old uh, um, example that you submitted in a, in a laboratory one and try to analyze them, uh, why they were good and why they were bad according to the rules uh, that we have analyzed this week and that we will analyze uh, next week. Okay, uh, I need to shut down now. And so uh, thank you for, for listening up to this time. And uh, we, we can meet uh, in next week uh, for the next uh, chapter of the, of the course. OK, thank you. Uh, have a good meal.